Hi everyone, it's Andrea here with my mid-June wrap-up. The reason I'm doing a wrap-up now is because I'm going on holiday soon and I intend to spend most of my time reading by the pool. So I've already read eight or nine books this month, nine I think, um, so I thought I'd make a video now and then one when I come back with all the books I read at the end of the month. I'll also be doing a book haul that will be um, up around the 3rd of July, 4th of July. The reason being is don't get back from holiday until then. Um, but that'll be with the, I'll do my end of month wrap up on my book haul as soon as I get back from holiday. So, so far this month I have read, I said nine books. The first book I read was uh, an e-book which I got from NetGalley, um, which was a, a free read for an honest and fair opinion. And it's called uh, Colony of the Lost by, and it was by Derek Cavagiano. And it is a really good book. Basically, it is it's set in this town that was built on a colony that was lost, and there is this evil that lurks somewhere in this um, on this land, and it's coming back, and it starts killing people. And years ago, it killed all the uh, American Indians that lived there, and these three people, um, a grown man who's an alcoholic, and a teenager and a little girl can see this this spirit of this little boy and he tells them they're the only ones who can stop this creature because they can see they're the only ones who can see and so it tells their tale of being chased by this evil monster who can take over for their friends and people they know um, and, and inhibit their bodies it takes possession of them and they won't know that it's them and it's trying to um, it, it, it feeds on their blood and as it as they feed it gets stronger and stronger and stronger and it's also trying to, to make a new monster by uh, impregnating the mother of the, the teenage boy no the little girl one of those anyway I can't remember but it was really good book really well written the characters were brilliant and it was very scary it was a it was quite a scary book and I admit at the end when everything was resolved I I felt quite emotional it was such a roller coaster it really got me going I was really really emotional at the end and I did cry a little bit and I don't cry very often at books programs about dogs and cats and animals yes not so much books so that was the first book I read this month and it, oh what a way to start the month that's all I'm going to say the next book I, I read was this one which is The House on Cold Hill by Peter James as you know I'm a big Peter James fan I love his supernatural books but this one was a real disappointment it's your traditional ghost story, haunted house. You've got the mod stuff in, the ghost sends emails um, to people, nasty ones, and appears in Snapchat videos. And the promise with this book was so big, but it didn't work. He didn't pull it off. It's like he got to the end, he got bored, and said, alright, that's it. Now, I don't put spoilers in my reviews, but there is one in my review on this, which I haven't posted on my blog yet, but I will say it here. I think Peter James is a better writer than what he did here and the ending it was just like a second rate copy of the film the others with Nicole Kidman you know I figured that out and there were so many unresolved elements that I wanted to know about and so it, I was very disappointed it won't stop me buying Peter James book I've bought another book of his since I really really do like Peter James but this one I was very very disappointed in um, the next book I read was A Night In with Audrey Hepburn by Le Lucy Holiday. Okay, so what would you do if you found, you know, Audrey Hepburn sitting on your sofa, which you had borrowed from Pinewood Furniture Store? I know. It was fun. It's a fun, easy summer read that, you know, anybody can enjoy. It's just so simple, easy to read, nice characterizations. Love the bits where Audrey Hepburn discovered things like online ordering and Twitter and things like that. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. The Audrey Hepburn sets up, sets up her own Twitter account. <laughs> I mean, how cool is that? So it really was nice story, really, really easy to read. Like I said, great summer fun or any time. It's just one of those feel good books. Um, yes, the main character Libby is a bit wet at the beginning. You think, oh, for God's sake, stick up for yourself, woman. But I think that's the point. This is a trilogy of books. There's three books in the series. The last one comes out this year. And I think she will be getting stronger and stronger and more independent and more sure of herself as the books go on. So, on that note, I also read the second book in that trilogy, which is The Night In with Marilyn Monroe. Again, this time, she's split up with her boyfriend. Um, she's got a new relationship. And she comes home one night to find Marilyn Monroe's 
sitting on her sofa. And now Marilyn Monroe doesn't just sit on her sofa, Marilyn Monroe actually moves into the second spare room, which Libby's been using to make jewellery in. Um, <laughs> I, I was a bit worried about the perception of Marilyn there, so I thought, oh, it's going to be another one of those, all the Kennedys, all this, the blah, 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 drugs and alcohol. Yes, Marilyn was drinking a lot of Manhattans in this, I believe. Um, but it was a nice portrayal. She came off very sweet. Um, somebody who wanted to be everybody's friend, just had a need to be loved and liked, which is what she was like. She never could trust any people in her life. She never really had any friends that she could trust 100%. And I think that was part of the point of bringing her into it was so that Libby would realize how good her friends were. Now I am referring to my Goodreads history, which are the books I've read this month because I've read quite a few um, already. Uh, but yeah, I, I really like this one. It's really sweet. Now the third one comes out later this year and that's a night in with Grace Kelly. And I, I can't wait to see how it ends. I can't wait to see what Grace teaches her. So obviously Audrey Hepburn taught her about um, glamming herself up, uh, tailored, looking beautiful, dresses, slacks. And Marilyn teaches her more about being grateful for, for your friends. And, you know, that yeah, was nice. So the next one I read then was The Garden on Sunset by Martin Turnbull. This is set in in uh, 20s and 30s Hollywood, the so golden age of Hollywood based at the legendary Garden of Allah, which was a hotel complex built on the site of Ali Nazimova's house. Garden of Allah, Allah Nazimova. Um, she lived there for a few years after the, ho after the hotel was built. It starts in 1927 with these three people moving into the hotel from various places for various reasons. Um, you've got the young man who's been told never to come back because he's homosexual. So he comes to Hollywood where he can hopefully be himself. Um, you've got the girl whose mother wants her to be an actress but she doesn't, she wants to be a, a reporter and then you've got the girl who, who wants to make it big and they come together and they meet at the Garden of Allah and they're big, become great friends and it tells the story um, of their friendship in the first years that they lived there the Garden of Allah wasn't actually destroyed until 1959 and it was knocked down to, to make way for a bank oh. so a nice story, I thought it was a bit slow in parts I uh, and suddenly, and a lot of books do this, and I, I d maybe it's just because I'm reading them on my phone. Um, I'm not expecting the years to jump. So it's 1927, next minute it's in the middle of the 1930s. I'm like, whoa, what happened? <laughs> but no, it's a nice read. I really enjoyed it. I will be getting the next one in the series, which is um, about the making of Gone with the Winds. So that should be really, really interesting. So I enjoyed that one. Uh, next on the list is a play, and it is Terry Pritchett. Pratchett, I can't even say his name. Terry Pratchett's Weird Sisters, um, adapted for the stage by D. Stephen Briggs. Now the reason, <laughs> the reason I've, I've read this this month is because I am going to be in this play in November. I will be playing Nanny Og. Yeah, I know. Um, I will be playing Nanny Og um, at Newport Playgoers uh, Society's version, which is on at the Dolman in, I think it's, it's November the 14th it starts, or something like that. Um, obviously I'll be posting a lot more about that as we get going so obviously we had a play read we, we read the play um, on Wednesday night this week it's so funny um, obviously you can't translate the entire book into a play but it's a, it's a very good job and we are going to have a great time doing it and I really can't wait um, Terry Pratchett you just can't go wrong it's, it's like a uh, um, return of Beth basically Macbeth, yes, Pratchett style. I'm, I'm just can't say any more about it. So yeah. The next book I read is yet another um, e-book. It's by A. D. Davis, and it was called The Dead, the, the Miss, yeah, The Dead and the Missing. Um, it's about a man named Adam Park who runs or used to run uh, an investigation firm called Park Avenue in, in Investigations. This has been taken over by one of his employees who is trying to get rid of him. He is still the majority shareholder. So, but, but because he doesn't want to do the corporate investigation that they want to do, he's more interested in helping people. He's washed his hands, walked away, he lets him get on with it. He got money coming in from it, from his share of, of, of the business, and he's, he spends his life dotting around, surfing, swimming, and so on. Until um, the friend of a friend comes to visit him, whose sisters, who's on the autistic spectrum, has gone missing, and has been accused of stealing a lot of money. Adam starts to track her down, he meets gangsters, he meets much Russian gangsters, there's all sorts of gangsters and he travels all over the place, he goes to Paris, they go to um, uh, Vietnam and eventually it tells the story of how he finds this girl and brings her back 
and everything that happens in between and it is a very well told story the characters are really 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 good I enjoyed it this is the sort of book I would normally read this is the sort of book I absolutely love so yeah I, it didn't take me long uh, 24 hours to read this book that's pretty much standard for me um, the next book is another ebook and it's called An Unremembered Grave and I need to check who wrote that it, oh it was Abigail Paget um, this is a story about a vampire who was staked uh, 150 years ago by a slave named Joe. But in this story, you don't. If, if you stake a vampire, you can't. It, it doesn't die. It just sleeps. And you need to to kill a vampire properly. You need to cut its head off and burn the head. Um, but the, the guy Joe was ill, so he didn't do it. So 150 years later, um, building work on the site where the vampire's body was buried is going on and the grave's uncovered and the vampire wakes up but vampires in this story aren't evil they're not there to kill everybody they don't want to make everybody into vampires they are the custodians of our history so their history runs through their veins when they drink blood from a person that person's entire history and genetic history it, it goes into the vampire and they remember it they also have these people called adepts who are uh, what we would today term a witch so they can see vampires they know some they can see things that aren't there they see ghosts and he meets an adept who doesn't know that she is one because she, she was orphaned and or abandoned and brought up by people who didn't know what she was and it's their story of how they come together how he learns to live in the modern world how she comes to term with being a witch he never drinks her blood they did have an agreement that he could drink it if something said if if he helped to do something and he did but in the end he said no i want you to if you if you give me your blood i want you to give it to me freely i'm not going to take it and, and that's what i liked about this and the quest he had was to free a, pr a prisoner from um our maximum security jail he was he's basically sentenced there because he's committed murder nobody ever comes out his life's in danger um but from other prisoners even though he's done nothing but help these prisoners all all this time in there he was uh, convicted wrongly he was innocent and it's how she goes about proving his innocence and it is a really really nicely written story abigail paget tells a brilliant story her characters are lovely and they've got cats what's not to like i hope that there will be another another book with this i hope it will be there'll be another one in this story because I like the whole idea of vampires not being evil but being the custodians of human history. <clears throat> I think that would be fantastic. And the last book I read, I only got yesterday and I literally finished it this morning um, because it is a book about one of my passions which is Hollywood history and it's The Ruby Slippers for Oz by Reese Thomas. Now this book came out in 1989, the paperback version. And it tells the story of he investigates how many pairs of ruby slippers were actually made for the Wizard of Oz and how many still exist and there is still some debate there are four in this book known pairs that they can agree on that were used for, for Judy Garland in the film plus the Arabian test pair there was a pair that were very ornate they were that were also tested and they're focused on they do still exist and it's not just about the ruby slippers although that's the predominant theme it's a story about how hollywood wasn't interested in saving its history in the 70s um and the 50s after the 50s and 60s when the studio system ended how the studios started selling off their back lots and destroying their their back lots like um the new york set and the new england set that they all had different sets um mgm was a massive massive studio complex there's a really good book about that the mgm and I'll, i will do a review of that at some point because it's a great book and it tells a story of basically there was this this guy costumier named kent warner and he went to work um for various studios over the years he worked for mgm he worked for paramount he worked for stephen j cannell um lots of different studios and he would find costumes literally in the trash worn by gene harlow and Ginger rogers and clark gable and sometimes he said he'd go into the commissary and there'd be a rack of clothes there and people would be wiping their greasy hands on the silk and satin gowns and it, he was horrified so what would happen is he would start searching you know when they said oh go and clear out that closet and just burn everything or trash everything he would take it and go through it 
And then in 1977, when MGM sold off its entire stock of costumes, props, wardrobes, sets, everything, literally they sold everything, um, there was like a, a massive auction, um, which is where they sold the, the ruby slippers, one pair of the ruby slippers for $15,000, and this was in 1970. Um, how he brought the pieces together, how he found the ruby slippers, and, and obviously what happened to the, the other pairs that he found was a little bit naughty because he sneaked them away because basically he was told find one pair if you find them one pair goes to auction you destroy the rest oh really that was their attitude yet for shows and films they would always have two or three pairs of shoes especially if you were only wearing one costume i mean judy wore the same costume all the way through the film it was the same dress and other than in the first the kansas scenes until she got the, the slippers she wore the ruby slippers all the way through it so there would have been more than one pair and they said no get rid of them so he kept them um they also had a sale which is what they called a retail sale sale which was really tragic where they would be selling costumes for a dollar up a dollar in fact one woman picked up a, a a jacket a navy jacket and for a dollar and another woman said Do you know what you've got there and she said no she said well look at the label and it was Clark Gable's jacket from Mutiny on the Bounty and the woman said I'll give you twenty dollars for it now and the, the girl said no I'm keeping it and, and I think she sold it for something like two and a half thousand a few years later so it tells so it's not just about that it's about how Hollywood really didn't care for its history I mean when you think about MGM it was a big studio and yes he did have a lot of sets and costumes and it's hard for a studio trying to make money to, to keep all the stuff um, but in the end it was just about the money and it's, it's really really sad and if it wasn't for people like Ken Warner and Debbie Reynolds and John Bowles and the people mentioned in this book Hollywood memorabilia would not be treated the way it is now it would not have its value it's down to them that we have the costumes we have from the golden age of cinema and we don't have hardly anything we have a fraction of what was originally made all of the um, I think it was RKO Studios where Ginger Rogers and, and Fred Astaire worked, costumes were buried in a, a landfill on when Desi Lou took over, when Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz took over the studio and made it Desi Lou Studios. So there's, you know, that was their attitude to their own history. And today it seems mind boggling, but then they knocked down the Garden of Valor and built a bank. So there you go. So that was the last book I've, I've finished. Now, I would have read more this month if it wasn't for the fact that I am currently reading A Game of Thrones and as you can see I'm, I've got about a third of it left I'm not there's not a lot left so my plan is to finish this before I go on holiday so that it's dealt with but obviously I'll talk about that in the second part of my Jude wrap up which will be when I get back from holiday so I am enjoying this I will say that I mean 20 years ago I wouldn't have picked it up when it came out but I'll talk more about that in my next wrap up. So that is what I've read so far in June. I'm also halfway through Marissa Mayer Cinder as well. So again, hopefully I'll finish that before I go on holiday and it can be in my next wrap up. There is, I have learned where we are going in Tenerife, an English bookshop. Yay! And I will be going in there as well. So I'll probably put some photos in my next video. So I'm looking forward to watching all your wrap up videos and I will see you soon. Bye!